All right, good morning, everyone. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, without divulging your lineup, can you just tell me if uh, there's any changes from Monday's lineup? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, I was looking back at game one, and I noticed on one of the power plays you had some of the fourth guy, fourth line guys come out at the end. I guess what was just the, the thinking with that? Well, the, the first group changed pretty quick. The second group changed, changed pretty quick, and they sent it down on a break, but I think it was 30 seconds left. Uh, Mac and those guys weren't ready to go back out so because they had just kind of doubled up before that. So I just threw those guys out, hoping they could get something low to high and get it back to the net. So there's about 30 seconds of it there. Um, that was a complete line, so I just thought I'd go with it and just see if they could bang something in and uh, on, with an ugly goal with a little bit of time left. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Yeah, I imagine the answer is no, but uh, does an 8.45 puck drop change anything at all about how you uh, prepare for this game, uh, anything at all? No, no. I mean, so the players obviously get a little bit more rest. Um, they come back and they'll be prepared and ready to go. Our morning stays the same. They just get a little bit more time at home. Some guys come to the rink a little bit earlier because it's such a late game, but um, everything stays the same on our end. Pat Graham, Associated Press. Hey, Jared, how you doing? Uh, thanks for taking the time. So the Blues are in contact with the league regarding COVID testing. They, they think there's some discrepancies and who knows what's going to happen. I guess do you prepare for just anything if, and everything kind of at this stage. Uh, in regards to what? Just in regards to who may be out there, who may not be out there, what you might see, what might happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we prepared for for them for four days getting ready um, for all their players, not just for, you know, the, their recent lineup. So we're prepared for, for whatever lineup they throw at us. And, um, you know, we, we give our guys a little bit of information before the game once we know what it is. And um, But, yeah, it doesn't change anything on our end, who's playing or who's not. Last one here for Jared. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Jared, is there any concern about the fourth line and maybe given the fact that game one was so chippy and you guys are playing – this team for, for the 10th tenth, the tenth time that you might want to get a little tougher on that fourth line? Yeah, we'll, we'll evaluate it on a game-to-game -game basis. I don't think that there was anything in that game that we weren't expecting. I thought we handled it well. We played well. We played physical, competed hard in, in all the right areas. So, um, if I mean, if we need to make an adjustment to a li our lineup at some point, then we'll do it. Um, but again, we're just kind of evaluating that on a game by game basis and, and we'll pick the best lineup that we feel gives us the best chance to win. All right, thank you, Jared. All right, thank you. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Jonas Donskoy. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hi, Jonas. Uh, what did you think of your performance and the team's performance in game one? And what are, I guess, some things you're just trying to touch up heading into tonight? Uh, I think we did a pretty good job most of the game. Um, good offensively, um, created, created a lot of scoring chances, but obviously there's, there's some things that we, we want to fix going into the tonight and, and, uh, we talked about it as a team and, and, uh, you know, it's all, it's all about getting better every night. So there, there's some things that I think we can improve for, for uh, tonight's game. Warren Javara, Altitude Sports. Hey, I was just looking at, you know, the first game and, and Gabe having that Gordie Howe hat trick and just how the top line played in general. One, just how do you think that fight in the first period kind of gave you guys some energy? And, and what did you see from the top line um, in that first game on Monday? Well, top line was on top of the game. They were amazing. And, and uh, you know, Landy, Landy standing up for Miko. Uh, I think I think he got the whole team on fire. Uh, it's just great to see. And uh, amazing game by him, you know, goal, goal assist and, and a fight. So can't ask more for uh, for a captain of this team. So, so yeah, he's he's leading the back. Peter Baugh, the Athletic. Yeah, hey, Jonas, how much of an emphasis has there been the last day or two on, I guess, like getting traffic in front of the net and tipping pucks? Yeah, we've talked about it, and um, I think that's something that we can we can do better job at. Uh, 
you know, they're boxing out hard, so we just have to find ways to get in front of, front of their goalie and, and get some tips and rebound goals. So I think that's uh, that's one thing. All right, thank you, Jonas. Thanks. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche defenseman Patrick Nemeth. Questions for Patrick? Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Patrick, uh, just what did you think about uh, your performance in game one and how the team did overall, and what are you looking to touch up going into tonight? Well, I thought, was, uh, I thought we played a pretty solid game. I think, uh, you know, I think we played uh, the first five or so minutes in the, in the first. I thought we, were, we came out maybe a little, a little slow, but then after we got our legs going and I think we, uh, we played our strength. Um, I think, you know, I think they're going to, you know, respond tonight. I think it's going to be a good game, so uh, and we'll be ready for it. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Patrick, just looking at, you know, the first game and, and what Gabe was able to do first, um, getting that Gordie Howe hat trick and what the top line was able to do. How much do you think that fight in the first period kind of gave you guys energy for the rest of the game? And, and what did you see from the top line um, in general on Monday? Yeah, you know, it was it was uh, it was a great response by him. Uh, you know, it's a big reason why he's captain here because he do stuff like that. Uh, you know, they're 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 a great line. They're gonna they're gonna get their chances. Uh, they're gonna create. Um, I think uh, you know they're 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 tough to handle down low and in their in the, on the rush game. Um, so um, so yeah, it'll be exciting. Uh, it'll be an exciting game tonight, like I said before. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Patrick, you had some third period crease battles in front of Grubauer with uh, O'Reilly there and uh, Clifford at the end. Uh, and then obviously you helped lead a, uh, a PK unit that was perfect. It seems like those are two areas which are the reason why the Avs brought you in. Uh, if you could just talk about those two elements, please. Yeah, touching on the first thing. I mean, it's it's going to be battles out there. I mean, if you're looking at the other series, they're they're it's you know they're they're battling for 60 minutes, and I think that's it's not going to be anything different with uh, with this series against the Blues. Uh, you know, they want to play a physical game, and we're we're going to have to respond to that. Uh, and I think we you know game one, I think we did a pretty good job, but I think uh, it's going to heat up uh, the further this series goes. Um, and on the on the PK, I think uh, you know as a unit we've uh, We've done a pretty good job, uh, you know, putting pressure on ice and and being tight in our own zone. And uh, you know, we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna have to keep keep getting better here as the series move on. Because you know, they they see the way. If 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 we're making an adjustment, there's they see it right away. And if they're making an adjustment, we we see it. So we're gonna. It's it's just a matter of adjusting to each other for uh, for this whole series. Pat Graham, Associated Press. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Um, David Perron is such a significant playmaker for them, and you don't know if you're going to see him or not see him. How do you prepare for someone that if you don't know you're going to see him or you're not, and when they're that dynamic? No, we're we're just we're just worrying about you know the team that they're putting on the ice. I think you know they have a they have a good team over there, and and you know uh, we we can't worry about or think or, or think about someone's missing or whoever they have in their lineup. We're just we're just worrying about what 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 they bring uh, what they're going to bring tonight in game two. Last one here for Patrick Scott McDonald, Colorado Hockey Now. Hey Patrick, you obviously spent a lot of time on the uh, on the penalty kill, but on the forward side of things, on the PK, you know Tyson Joseph, the guy that's been pulling a lot of minutes um, all season and, and obviously through the playoffs as well. So I'm just curious um, your your take on his game and what he brings to the defensive side of things and and, and just the PK in general. Yeah, Tyson. I think he's 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 grown uh, a lot since since uh, since I was here last time. I think uh, he's skating real well, and he's got, he's got you know he's got a good stick. He's like I said with the up ice pressure, he's he's good at that. Uh, he's just a, he's a smart player, and and uh, he's uh, he's been uh, evolving his game a lot. And I think uh, he's he's a lot better uh, this time around, and he's a really important player for us. All right, thank you, Patrick.